died. A little girl received her testament at school, and uh, when they give them out, she was all excited. She went home and showed her dad the Bible that she had got. He took it away from her and told her that it was no good. He stuck it in his pocket. The next day, he went to work at the mines. And there was a cave in. And when they got to him, all 13 had died. They were sitting around in a circle. And every one of them signed that testament. And her dad signed that testament also and said, It's a very good book. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and that, that where, and shall prosper where unto the thing I send it. God knows where to put his word to where people will get it. And sometimes they've been many places been closed down that we can't carry Bibles that we did before. The schools has made a lot of changes. The hospitals has took them out. We don't get into jails anymore to carry the Bibles there. But they've been a lot carried there. And we've had some when we uh, did the fruit bags at Christmas ask if they could get a full Bible. So we got one and carried it to them. So I guess they let them get it on in. But as far as going back and witnessing to them, we've not been able to do that since the COVID come along. The Gideons are Christian business and professional men recommended by our pastor to be in this organization. It's self-supporting. So everything that you give uh, goes to buy, have Bibles printed and, and shipped. We pay all our expenses wherever we go, whatever we do for the Gideons. We do that so you can say 100% of it goes to that. And it's extended arm of this church. But what you have done in the past years for the money that you give goes to play the Bible around the world. And uh, the purpose is to win men, women, boys and girls to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And this is accomplished by personal witnessing. You know, we might say, I can't witness to people. But we do. Each and every day of your life, when you go out, the life that you live, the things that you do when you're shopping, what kind of witness are we that way? The sports players, you know, we can tell you all about them, what they do, how many home runs they hit, how many touchdowns they scored. We can share all of that without a bit of problem. But if, when it comes to sharing Jesus, you know, that's a different story. Grace Day was a nurse in Orangeburg, South Carolina. This is a particular day she was working in the hospital in Orangeburg and she was making her rounds and she got to the room, she went by, his man was sitting in there and he was crying, his hands were shaking. She stopped and went back, I asked if she could call his pastor. He said, I don't have one. And I called family, he didn't have any family. And she asked, could she help him tell him about God's love? He said, well, I would like to have one of those cigarettes that you have in your pocket. She said, what you see is not a cigarette. It's my testament. And she pulled it out, asked God, said, tell me what to say to this man. She thought of John 3.16, talking about his love. And then over in John 14, said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. If I go prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself to where I am. There you may be also. And at that time, his hands had quit shaking. He had calmed down. And she reached over and kissed him on the forehead. And she gave him her testament to read. About six months later, there was some flowers sent to the floor where she worked. And said, thank you for taking time to talk to me and share with me. Your God is now my God. And the nurse said, then it was my time to shed some tears. 
you know, we ought to be thankful for the nurses that we have. If you go to the hospital, you'd like to have a Christian doctor and a Christian nurse, would we not? To get the best of care that we could, that we could receive. And there's many times people send back telling, you know, what, how their life has changed. And we go to the other countries also. The Gideons are just getting into Russia, and they was there getting ready to make a distribution in the schools. They would open the doors and let them in the schools there. As they was getting ready to go, the police chief pulled up side of them and said, follow me. They started following him down the road, and they got to all the schools where they were supposed to be going to make the distribution, but they didn't stop there. They kept going a good ways on past that. He said, give Bibles here. So they went in and made the distribution to all the students and to the faculty. And he said, follow me. So he went back and stopped at the school where they were supposed to be going. And the leader of the group said, he finally got up enough nerve. They didn't know what he was going to be carried for questioning or what was going to happen. He said, I'd like to ask why we went to the other school first. He said, I have two children there. I wanted to make sure they got me. You know, God's word gets out. And we're uh, serving in more than 200 countries now in more than 100 different languages. And uh, like I said a while ago, it's the extended arm of this church. You help place these Bibles that can be carried to Russia and to all these other places if we can get there and have the people to do it for us. And we have people from our own camp that's gone to other countries to, to carry Bibles over there. And they paid their way to go. They took time off from work so they could go and they could deliver these Bibles and work there. And when they come back to how their life has really changed, and uh, we have another one. A guy was in uh, Oklahoma. He said that he was raised in a family. He said his parents carried him to little league ball, played ball, went hunting, camping, hunting, and fishing. He said that they had lived in the suburbs of the town and said we had all the things that money could buy, had everything we needed. He went off to college and was gone to for the time there, he come back home. He said his life was empty. He took a shotgun and shot his mom and dad and his sister. When he was arrested and put in jail, he said, I was sitting there in the jail with the worst of society and said I was one of them. And uh, he was serving, fixing to start serving, three 40-year sentences for what he had done. He said he never had any remorse for what he had done. It didn't bother him one bit for what he had done. So one day on a Sunday morning, the street preacher come into the jail. He started preaching to the, to the uh, ones in jail and telling them that God loved them, God could change their life. And Gary Fossum was there, and he stood back, he told us, Preacher, if you come any closer to these bars, I'll kill you. He said, I cussed him every time I, I get around, he'd come. He said, I thought he'd quit coming. The very next Sunday, here come the preacher. He started telling them about God's love and how it could change their life. And it said it just bugged me. And said, I thought surely he would quit then. But said he kept on. And he said, that I, as time went on, I didn't know what, what I was going to do and go into jail and said that I decided that I was going to commit suicide. And there's a, a guy in cell with him and told him he was, used to be a paramedic. And he said he helped him smuggle some razor blades in. He said, if you will cut yourself a certain way, he said, you will bleed so fast they'll never get you to the hospital. But that night, he kicked the Bible under the bed. He threw the Bible when the preacher was talking to him. And he thought of that Bible. And he said, I had nobody to send out and tell them I, what I was planning on doing. I didn't have anybody that cared a thing in the world about me except that preacher that was coming. 
and preached it. And said that he got ready, he got that Bible out from under the bed where he kicked the cross there. He said, but he spit on that Bible and he cussed and he threw it. And uh, he got it out and said, well, instead of writing a note, I'm going I'm to uh, read a few verses and see what it says. He turned to Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8 and read those. He said, it started out, as I started reading, I had a burning that's come into my heart. He said, it's everything I started to say. He said, I finally had tears running down my face. I finally got on my knees at the, bed, there, at the bedside and said, God, if you can change me, that's what I would like. I have no one else that cares for me at all. And he said, as I got on my knees, he said, all the things that he had done, all the sins that he had committed over the years, he said it was like it's swallowing a hot potato. He said, I started writing down the things that I had done. And uh, I, he said it, it played. I uh, had more tears and more tears coming. And he said, God, if you can change my life, let me know. Just somehow show me how my life can be changed. And said that he went on and said then he got up. He knew that God had took that old stony heart that he had, that he had changed him and that he had saved his, his soul. After he'd been there a while, he'd been in jail for several uh, months, he got married. You know who he married? The preacher's daughter. <laughs> while he was in prison. It, that they had, she had stuck by him all these years. And I don't know how much time that he actually ended up serving. He's still serving time or not. Three, forty years service is, is a pretty good sentence, I would say. But, you know, he's willing to do that. Then there's many ways that you can help uh, the Gideon ministry. We need qualified members to join the organization. First, we need the prayers of the people, that they would pray for us, that we would get the work done that needs to be done, and that we can... Uh, we can have uh, well, financial contributions and use the Memorial Bible Plan. This Bible costs $5. It's been $5 for years. And it can be placed in a hotel, motel room, and it has an av average lifespan of six years. And between that six years, it has the potential of reaching 2,300 people around the world. And we also have the cards that you can send in. Uh, thinking of you cards and different ones and that you see in it. And also have the in-memory cards that you can do. Send, uh, get it and fill them out and send it in to the to Gideons. And they will make sure that the Bible is there. And I like the nurses' testimonies. They mean a lot. You know, a lot of times, they're the last one the person talks to before they leave this world. And if they're not willing to serve, you know, God and use what they have to witness to people, how many people would probably be in hell tonight because no one took the time to witness to them and share what God can do? for each and every one of us. And this particular one, her name is Harriet. And I've, I have a picture of Harriet that's here in this little magazine that we get. Not a real old lady, but a, maybe a few years on her. But she said that she was going through a bad time in her life. But God healed her marriage and started her on the life of faith down the road. And she didn't know how she would be a witness to people in her profession, what she was doing. But God worked in her heart. She was a registered nurse from Milwaukee. And she was serving there and she, when she went to work in the hospital. She worked in the ICU unit. And 
while she was there, they brought a young man in, 14 year, uh, 18 years old. He had been away from home since he was 14. and said you could tell that he had lived way beyond his years for the life that he had been out on the streets, got to street drugs and using them. He was brought into the ICU unit and she was assigned to look after him every day. The doctor told him when he'd come in and said he only has a few days to leave, that he'd bleed and return. So she, that he would never give him any uh, way to get in contact with his family. But she knows that about the third day she worked with him that she was not keeping a regular uh, blood pressure. She called the doctors and they come. And the doctor said his name was Gary. He said, Gary, We've done everything we can do for you. There's nothing else we can do. Those things are just not looking good at all. Harriet was there and she said, is there anything I can do to comfort you? He said, I'd like to see my mom one last time. He finally gave her the number and she, uh, holding his hand, she took his hand away. She ran to the phone and called the number that he gave. The lady answered the phone and said, your son's in intensive care, not expecting to live, and he wants to see you. She said, Gary, she was not prepared for what she was going to hear next. She said, Gary, never give me anything but trouble in life. There's nothing I can give him in death. With the tears streaming down her face, she went back to her locker to try to get herself together before she went back. And she was there, and she happened to think of the testament that the auxiliary had given her to the elevator some months before that. She got it out of her locker, and she thumbed through it. She said, God, tell me what to say to this young man. Help me with what I need to say. And she hurried back to the room, and she knew she didn't have it just a little while. She said, Gary, I have a Bible here. Is there anything? Can I read some too? It has uh, Baptist Shepherd. He said, that's good. He said, my mom used to tell me about the, the, the shepherd leading the flock to steal water. She said, that's good. He said, that we'll read the psalm. He said, that Psalms 23 come up. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Then she said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believes in should not perish but have everlasting life. And then over in uh, Revelation 3, 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, sup with him, and he with me. If she held Gary in her arms, she said, Gary, would you like to pray the sinner's prayer? And she led him in the sinner's prayer. And when she uh, got through, said there was a peace come over that room. Gary died in her arms. There was eight doctors standing behind her and said uh, every one of them had tears running down their face. And she put it, Gary down and walked across over to the nursing station. Couldn't, she couldn't speak anymore for a bit. And the head doctor come over and said, Harriet is his mother on the way. She said, no. He said, I think God sent a very special mom today. And she's there. That someone every day, somewhere, needs a touch of the master's hand. And if they not been, Harriet had not been willing to take that Bible, she had not had problems in her marriage, she may have not have been there. But you know, you look at the streets here, even in our mall now, how many people sitting on the street corners now asking for help? But a lot of it is to get.
get rudder now. And how it goes on. And there's one young man was telling me when we was going to jail, him and his girlfriend was staying in one of the dumpsters, I guess, that Louder owns over there on the hill. They'd picked up an old mattress and drug it and throwed it in there. And they used, they had that mattress there and they was using that to get out of the weather. She ended up going back to, into jail. They sent her to Raleigh for prison. Or she was over there for a good while. She come home and she called someone, another person, and she just got home. Did you come and get me in Salisbury? We went and got it. The next day was Sunday. He was on his way to church. He got a phone call and said that young lady died that night from an overdose. Just getting out of prison. You know, we don't know what goes on around the battle. A lot of things we don't see. But these Bibles can be placed and change a lot of lives. About nine months later, Eric was still working. And they got a call. The flight for life was bringing a 16-year-old in. They'd been in a severe car wreck. And she was, had the people told him, said when the News media finds out about it. All the sports people, they'll be uh, coming to see what's happening. It was the son of uh, Gordon, uh, Indy race car driver. And this was Gordon Jr. When they flew him in, he had traumatic brain damage. And after about a month of talking to uh, doctor, they said he was brain dead. Harriet was assigned to set with him every day. And she went and said, God spoke to her and said, this man needs to be, needs help. Needs to know about God. And Harriet took her Bible, her testament, and she read every day as she was there with him. She read the Bible to him. And after another couple months, the doctor said, he's brain dead and laughed at her for reading the Bible to her. On Sunday morning, I mean on Christmas morning, Harry was making, getting her prepared for the Christmas lunch. And the phone rang. And, uh, but she had begged him not to put uh, Gordon Jr. in a nursing home, to take him home and read to him. And his her wife was reading to him, and she said that told Harriet that she had asked for a Christian nurse and a Christian doctor. But when she got there, she got this call. She said, hey, Harriet, this is Gordon Jr. And her, his dad took the phone later and said, when his wife went in to see him that morning, that Christmas morning, she reached over and kissed him on the forehead. He said, hi, Mom. And they got in contact with the hospital trying to find Harriet's number. They wanted to talk to her personally. But when he talked, to, when he got her to the hospital, they brought him back to the doctor and wanted to examine her. And said when she walked into that hospital room, when they brought her back to where she was at, he said he had a smile come on his face. And when she spoke to him, he said, God loves you. She said, Harriet, I would have known your voice anywhere. I could hear you read, but I couldn't, I couldn't speak. That's one time it turned good, not for the bad. So she said that was one of the best days that she had ever had since she had been a nurse. And these nurses, they do a lot of work, and they take a lot of time sharing with people. And that's what this ministry is all about. And, you know, you never understand how, when, and how. But... If you're willing to be there and willing to have the words and share with people, a lot of lives can be changed. I want to thank the pastor for the years that he has supported to get in ministry and the church here that has allowed us to come in and share with you what's going on 
around the world and what we can do there to help someone. Thank you for taking, letting us have this time. I had a quick question. Did you, did you say you could no longer go in the jail now? No, we don't go in the jail now. No. We had not since COVID. Okay. Well, and the hospital? And no, you, no. Might still, you might get dessert. Yeah. You might get <laughs> disease from cannabis to bottle. Okay. And they're sick of my Okay. And, and, and the schools are off limits too? Well, you they know? changed it. They let us go to high school. Okay. And now they have changed it. And it says you can go to the library mm -hmm. and put them in there. And they're not going to tell them about it. Right, know. right. And, and they don't know the there, so right. some of them will not be going to pick up. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of changes that's been made. This shows you where we're at, folks. Amen. We, uh, I appreciate the work they do. And uh, I'm just uh, amazed. And, uh, you know, there's one thing about it. The book of Hebrews says this in Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrows and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And uh, just uh, the word of God can go places we can't go. Uh, but if we can just get it there, and I appreciate the ministry of uh, the Gideons. We've got just a few minutes here. I'm going to do something just a little different. And... Uh, uh, I have a life verse, actually a couple of them, and uh, I'm just going to give you mine and uh, just tell you about how they've impacted my life right quick, and I'll try to be brief because I want you to share maybe yours. In John 15, 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same shall bring forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. And uh, that's my life verse. I realize I'm nothing, can do nothing, without the presence of God in my life. Without the Word of God, uh, I'm just, uh, uh, He's the vine and I'm the branch. I'm linked to Him, and as long as I stay linked to Him, I can accomplish great things through Him, and I'm so grateful for that truth. And the other verse that's impacted my life was the third chapter of Exodus. Um, God used that in a Sunday school lesson uh, to deal with my heart and break my heart. I kept using the excuse. I kept saying, just like Moses did, Lord, I'm not eloquent. I, I, I'm, I'm bashful. It's all I can do just to speak to my wife or anybody else as far as that goes uh, but God began to use that verse to break my heart and uh, God began to deal my heart and reveal to me that it wasn't about what I could do it's about what he could do through me and I was able to speak, speak his word and preach his word and then the other one is Psalm 23 uh, he used that in one of his stories I was in a Bible conference hadn't been called to preach long and I was discouraged and defeated about some things that I had come to know about a man that I really respected and I uh, had a lot of confidence in, and I, I'd sort of got a bitterness toward God, toward him. And uh, uh, Dr. Hanley Melby from Kentucky was preaching in that car. I remember just like it's right now. And uh, he had no raspy voice, and I, he just uh, uh, bald as I am. But when he preached, he, he, he would let you have it, I promise you. And uh, but he said, some of y'all need to let God lead. You've been leading yourself too long. It's time to let God lead. And the Holy Ghost showed up that day and changed my life. And uh, I come to a great truth that God was the leading me and not myself. Just preach and leave the consequences to him. And uh, those three, three scriptures have impacted my life more than any scriptures there are uh, in the Bible. So that's my turn. Now, be very brief. I was brief. And if you've got at least one, we've got a little more, more of you than me. I think you, I felt what I need to share. But anybody got a life verse you want to share and what it means to you? Anybody? Opportunity. All right. Generation uh, cultures have tried to get rid of the Bible, but still God's on the throne, and it will not return void. Uh, it still does its job uh, because it is the Word of God, and we're so thankful for that and for the work that the Gideons do in helping us. They are arm of the church, as Brother Gerald said. Uh, they are very always respectful of the pastors, and uh, always just. Uh, usually get a couple meals for us or conferences through the year and they are a blessing and an arm of the church there so uh, pray for them and uh, he's going to come and stand here with an open bible and if you want to give something if you want to write a check you write it to 
Gideon's International. If you want to give a financial gift, it all goes to them at the end. He'll put it in an envelope. We'll seal it, and it goes to help the Gideons give Bibles. Remember, these are five dollars uh, each. So if you you hundred dollars, that's what twenty Bibles. Uh, you do the math. If it's only one that you can do, hey, it's it's somebody maybe being saved uh, that's on the verge of leaving their life in a motel room. We don't know uh, what the effects may be, uh, but anyhow. I know some of our Sunday school classes already used the card system, uh, placing a Bible in memory or honor of somebody. I've actually received those myself, and what a blessing that is to know that the Word of God has been put out in your honor somewhere so somebody has the possibility of getting saved. Amen. So appreciate you being here tonight. We're going to stand to our feet. We're going to pray, and uh, we're going to uh, ask the Lord to uh, bless the Gideons and to bless this offering and uh, to be, be with us till we meet. Again, we're in the book of Daniel now, Wednesday night. Uh, let me recommend a movie to you. Uh, what's the name of that again, Dave? His Only Son, okay? It's on the uh, story of uh, Abraham and Isaac. Uh, it's on here locally. Renata went to see it. It's very scriptural. I mean, it, it is on target, okay? I think some of the kids are going and the youth are going Wednesday night. So uh, it's, it's that good, I promise you. Uh, you won't go. You won't waste your money seeing it because it's right with Scripture, and it op it's a visual of everything you read in the life of Abraham. Uh, it's really good. I promise you. So, if you want to go so see something good and clean, and uh, get you a bucket of popcorn while you're there, Renee just goes to eat the popcorn. I'm good and tell you, she don't care about the movie, uh, but she loves that. Po she loves popcorn. All right. So anyhow, and uh, but uh, I have to get her interested in the movie. So, but she likes the popcorn. All right. So I'm telling on her tonight. I'm not going. I've already been. Uh, the youth and the children are going Wednesday night, okay? But you can go whatever time they show up here. Uh, they do, a, I don't know, the evening this week. It goes off Thursday, so you got one more week. And if you don't see it, we might can get it on a DVD or something when it comes out. But I promise you, it's it's that good. You'll see uh, how the history behind it and everything's real good. Don't, don't leave at the end, okay? When it's over, stay and listen to the guy who wrote it and produced it, and that he, he'll tell more about what he's doing in the project, okay? Uh, it's uh, it's very informative what he has to say, okay? Uh, we need more men like him in in, the, in that arena. All right, let's close in a word of prayer. Brother Jarvis, when we finish praying, if you'll come down and uh, you guys just give uh, as unto the Lord, and uh, let's have a word of prayer. Lonnie, you pray for us tonight.